All right, so it's week three of a Bronco on the go. BYU's 2-0 and through the first two weeks, and here we are back at Bam Bam's. In fact, our guy, Cam. There he is. The owner, pit boss of Bam Bam's, was uh, down in Texas with you guys last week, showing them how to do barbecue, apparently. Pit boss. Yeah. That, I like that. Yeah. Man. Well, there's a couple things we were showing him how to do in Texas last week. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. <laughs> uh, 41-7 was uh, quite the statement. Uh, I know you were you know, thrilled with how it turned out, and you told me after the game that uh, you weren't terribly surprised that it turned out that way. Not, not that you had this arrogance going in, but you know. We, we thought we'd play well. Um, we had prepared really well. The team was really confident. Certainly didn't know what the score would be. Um, but all of a sudden, um, turnovers that kind of came in a batch and field position changes and a few scores, and that's what led to this, the outcome. When you touch down Friday afternoon, I guess, in Austin, you're hit by a wave of heat and humidity. What's the first thing you thought when you stepped off the plane? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so how do you prepare for that? And we hadn't talked about it. We hadn't acknowledged it. Maybe that was better. But the players came off, and they, I could see the mumblings and the... They're looking at me, but their mouth is kind of talking like that to their buddies, and oh man, it's hot. And, um, and then it didn't take long, first or second series, and defensive linemen are tapping their helmets, and guys running in, and guys running out, and so, yeah, um, we, we came out of it okay, but it was, it was hot. So that definitely added something to the equation. You get down oh, there, you man. hit with the atmospherics, now you're thinking about something else now in addition to what you got going on. We were, and then we went straight to the stadium and, and uh, artificial surface, and it was still in the afternoon, and the heat, you know, as you look down, at the kind of the waves. heat waves are coming yeah. off, and um, in relation to the time we spent at the stadium for UConn, all of a sudden, guys started moving off the, <laughs> off the playing surface about in half the time. And, um, they didn't spend as much time hanging out. Exactly right. Yeah. And they were in the locker room where there was relative air conditioning. And uh, so that, that was an alert to me, okay. And so hydration, we started just slamming it at that point all mm -hmm. through the night and the next day. Yeah. What was the uh, mindset of the guys, do you think? What kind of uh, attitude were they kind of uh, putting off in, in, in the day before the game leading up to the game? Optimistic and excited. They there there wasn't any of the furrowed brows and kind of the um, the anxiety looks. It was eagerness and excitement and, and uh, anticipation, but in a good way. Was it because of what had happened the year before as much as what was going to happen the next day? Uh, I think both. Um, I think because of the year before, but also uh, I think that they believe we have a better team now than we did a year ago, and uh, they weren't as focused on what Texas had. They just thought we were better. And so that alone, I think, led to the, some of the swagger that was there. What did you think about Texas, knowing they had uh, a new coaching staff and they were going to be using a new quarterback and a new center and some new linemen? All these things were kind of piling up. You know, I, I didn't think much about it because um, we had just gone through leaving five players at home ourselves. And so as a coach, you're doing everything you can to get the team ready. You acknowledge that. And, but you really don't use that in any way to say we're not going to play as well or you don't say that to the team to anyone else and you th you figure a way that you figure in a way that you're going to win any way that you have to they have a new coach they have a different edge to them they were playing physical um, they had the date circled it was a huge game for them it was a home game mm -hmm. and so not to now say a, a player or two critical position certainly but there are 18 or 19 other guys out there and and so I'm not willing to concede that was just the difference. So the, the way the game was played, you guys go to the locker room up 6 nothing at halftime and probably thinking you'd earned more than a 6 nothing lead. I, I was feeling more like maybe a 20 to nothing or 17, something like that. Um, but it wasn't. But we were certainly optimistic, meaning that um, if we will convert here in, in, the, in the blue zone, if we will convert this, if we'll play, stay penalty free in this situation, this could be a different game and it could be a different game, game pretty quickly. You talked post-game about the third quarter emphasis. It was the one quarter you didn't score in at UConn. And you talked a lot about third quarter and how big that was going to be. And you came out and played one of the best third quarters in really BYU football history. It, it, was, it was really fun. Um, and I'm not going to take credit for it. I was helpful in ar architecting a plan from the minute UConn was over as to we need to score in every quarter. We need to be more consistent. And we don't certainly want to start flat in the third quarter um, like we just did in that previous game. So we put, put some best practices in place, develop some new ones, and uh, over time it will tell if they really work. Um, in that game, certainly they did, um, but I think we're on the right track, and, and uh, it should give us a great chance to not only start the game fast, but start the half fast. Okay, best moment, again, best moment for you from Saturday night in Austin. Best moment Saturday night in Austin. I, I think Mike Elisa interception uh, at the end of the game. And so on the headset before that play, um, 
the, the coaches, and one in particular is fairly animated on the headsets, and his voice goes way up and he yells, and we're usually telling him to turn his mic down or move it or something. Who's this coach we're talking about? I'm not going to say. Okay. Um, right. But anyway, he coaches Mike Elisa. Um, okay. okay. And, so, right. okay. <laughs> and so he's coaching Mike like we're Mike and saying, Mike, buzz drop, buzz drop, Mike. And, and so we're all usually saying we're not Mike, but, you know, he's saying things like that. Right. And so he's saying it really loud, and it just so happens that um, whether his drop was perfect or not, he intercepted the ball. And so there was a complaint after the play that he didn't drop appropriately. And I said, he just intercepted the pass and returned it 30 yards. Is, that, is it not outcome-oriented? And anyway, that was all happening while the play was going on, which is the commentary behind the game, which is going on during the game, which is one coach still yeah. learning to use the microphone appropriately. Yeah. Come on, Kelly. Yeah, Kelly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Mike Mike uh, was used to catching balls out of the backfield. He was a little dis disappointed in himself that he didn't like yeah, take it to the, the house like skills. a running back, exactly. right? The quarterback caught him easily, yeah. by the way, and kind of slung him down. So we're, we're working on that part. All right. So this sets up uh, the home opener. Wow, you were on the road for two weeks, uh, traveled mm -hmm. a lot of miles already. Now you get to come home and, and open the home part of your season. How excited are you and the guys for that? Excited, but haven't really even had a chance to digest that we're at home because of the Thursday game. I mean, we're still trying to figure out what, what day of the week it is and practice and school. And, the and venue's so, secondary almost, right? It, I, mean, it, I mean, yeah. yeah. It, it just There's so much work that still has to be done. And Monday's practice was a Wednesday, and Tuesday's a Thursday, and Wednesday's a Friday, a modified Friday. and. Then there's classes in between, and we're just uh, working on getting ready to play. And it just happens to be at home, and I think we'll realize that maybe once we run out of the tunnel. And, uh, you know, Houston, maybe the perfect opponent to have to face coming off of Texas where you're feeling good oh. about yourselves because of the game they gave you last year. The, 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 the edge has a chance to come off after a big and emotional win right. and two weeks on the road. And especially in the community, as many pats on the back as the guys get. Um, and so, fortunately, I think... Fortunately, it is a short week, it is that opponent, and there's really no time to feel good because there's so much work to do. And so many of the guys that uh, you know, put up 46 against you are back. Exactly right, and, and our players all remember that game, and I remember that game, just how fortunate we felt to make one more play than they did, mm -hmm. which is really all it came down to is whoever made the last play was gonna win that game, and fortunately, Lonnie Fua made that play. You're on a national stage Thursday, kind of the only game in town, if you will, nationally. And already, just through two weeks and 2-0, and oh, BYU's on the national radar, Taysom Hill's on the national radar. You can already, if, maybe not you personally, hey, have sense you talked it. To, have you talked to Siri? I did, and it turns out that, that you're her favorite how, team. How does that work, by the way? You don't want to hear what I really think. But yeah, I, I do. I think what happens is she takes the team that's number 25 in the top 25 pool, and, and that's her team for the week. But so that's we, you. So we ought to stay there just for a week or two. No, don't do oh, that. Okay. Don't, don't have that be the objective. All right. I, just, <laughs> I thought that was pretty neat. It is pretty neat, though. Yeah. It, it kind of spread like wildfire as much as these other things are. Uh, the point is it hadn't ta hasn't taken much for BYU to become part of the discussion already. It's, it's, it's happening quick. It, it does happen quick, um, and that's a, it's a great compliment to the program and to our players. That, um, but I think it's also a compliment to Texas, um, because I think that particular team in that particular venue on that particular stage, it wasn't expected that it was going to be 41-7. to 7. And so I think uh, regardless of if they had players out or not out, um, for BYU to go in and play like that, that's difficult to do. And so I think all of that's led to the attention. So in this series of one-game seasons, what's going to be the key to making sure that everything that's happening externally, as you guys keep winning, as we hope you do, doesn't kind of take over and, and, and take away from focus? Wow, that's um, uh, staying in the moment. We, we are working really, really hard on, on... We've learned that there's a lot of things that we can control, and there's certain things we can't. But what we can control... Um, is just the exact moment that we're in, not what's happened before, not what's going to happen. And so we're working really hard just to stay in that place. Tough to say after game two what you might think after game 12 or 13, mm -hmm. but um, when you look around the team room or the locker room or you celebrate with these guys, what kind of, are you sensing anything special at this point? The, the, the players have, have um, shared with their position coaches, um, and I met with the leadership council today, that there is a different feeling in the locker room. There's a different um, camaraderie, there's a different chemistry, there's a di different optimism, but there's also a realism mm -hmm. of these are one game seasons. And so that's nice for me to hear from the player's perspective that it's one game, one game season, literally, for them to accomplish what they really want to accomplish. And so that means they haven't come out and stated what their true goals are, mm -hmm. but they're saying that each game is critical 
and that's refreshing to me. All right, the next game is Houston, which means we have to go to the board. So 41-7. Yep. And cross them out. Cross them out. That's good. How about right here? Right there. So I think I think we go with kind of the the uh, Houston logo. Start with the block U. I'm, I think so. I mean that just yeah. seems to uh, seems to make sense. And doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. Oh, that's that's not good. What I just did doesn't mean it's going to be perfect. But since I and normally anything that's in the color red, I, I'm kind of adverse to. But this this one we'll have to just do I think. And then it should probably come down like that and like that. It's not identical. It's not ideal because I think that's supposed to come up in the, in the but middle. But it's going to be but close enough, I think, for us. It's kind of like a goalpost with arms right there.